The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash the BPD show. Today is Friday, October 1st, 2021. If you feel as though there's a game being played on you, I think you might be correct. There's a game being played on all of us by our leaders, not only in terms of COVID-19, but also the absurdity of what we see in the fight to simply fund our government. Let's discuss that and so much more today. We begin with On the Clock. Joining, this, uh, joining us this morning is none other than Anthony Galloway, who is a regular on our show. He is a partner for the Dendros Group and uh, proud to say this morning, if I could be so bold as to introduce you for the first time as Reverend Anthony Galloway. Brother, how are you this morning? Very, very happy to be here. That is awesome to hear. If you don't mind, before we jump into the politics of it all, because everything that we do intersects with um, our real lives. Uh, do you mind telling the people about your journey as you just crossed some significant <laughs> milestones yesterday? Sure, sure. Well, it's the um, annual conference of the 4th Episcopal District of the AME Church in the Chicago annual conference. And uh, I was voted uh, by the, the board of examiners, the, the ministerial board at, that, of training, um, recommended me and a group of classmates uh, for um, ordination. So I'm, I am now an itinerant deacon in the African Methodist Episcopal Church. So it's a, wow. a huge, huge milestone and many years coming. <laughs> And for those who don't know, the AMT, the AME church is historically the church that was born out of the necessity for black people to have a place to worship. Could you just kind of dovetail that in terms as it pertains sure. to the history? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the first uh, it's the first organized um, uh, church uh, structure, uh, church structure. I mean, of course, there were there were spiritual gatherings before, but it was founded when two when its founders, uh, uh, Richard Allen and Absalom Jones, were removed from a Methodist service uh, because they they were segregating service, and so they left and started uh, with some with some fight <laughs> the Free African mm -hmm. Society, um, which eventually became would become the African Methodist Episcopal Church under Richard Allen's leadership. So, um, I mean, and they've been involved in many different places. We may we've talked at, you know at length about Dylan Roof in Mother Emmanuel. Well, Mother Emmanuel was not only an AME church, it was a rebuilt church from Denmark VC's AME mm, church. That's right. that's um, right. And so there's a long history of the AME church. Even on Bloody Sunday in Selma, the gathering and meeting space to launch that march was Brown Chapel AME church. Mm. Um, and so um, it's got a long history. Uh, and then I also dovetail, just because we're in the middle of a pandemic, uh, Richard Allen and the societies were actually in Philadelphia uh, during the yellow fever uh, pandemic functioned as mm. nurses and took care of that community because they were they wow. they um had were found themselves their community was was less susceptible to it and they were able to help the the society afterwards were never paid for their labor went to abolitionist friends and those friends never stood up and, and advocated for them to be paid mm. for their time instead it, it, uh, suggesting that they go get extra jobs to make up the income that they lost taking care of the community <laughs> the absurdity of it all wow so there is a long history um, and your life is intersecting with that history as it pertains mm -hmm. to the need, the necessity for black people to have separate institutions because of history chasing us out of these institutions. There is a problem in America, but we're living we're living in the upside down. Anthony, I, I want to play a clip from Ron DeSantis because he is. He is being elevated and being asked whether or not he's going to run for president. And I want you to watch this. Right. His pathway to running for president, as he graciously says that, no, he's not considering it at this time. He's so humble. Right. But then he lists and enumerates the things that he knows are going to catch the ears of the people that he is going to use to elevate him to the potential presidency. And those things are things like attacking critical race theory, going after the school boards in the middle of a pandemic. And of course, he's focusing on his reelection as governor of the state of Florida. Let's take a listen in. Notice the media, no matter how many times you've answered the question about, are you considering a run for the presidency in 2024? And you give the same answer that they still keep asking you. What's your answer to those people that ask again and again? 
Yeah, I, I'm not considering anything beyond doing my job. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on in Florida. I'm going to be running uh, for re-election next year. Um, and we're also working on a lot of things in the state beyond just the governor's race. we got school board races, Sean. I want to make sure people are not supporting critical race theory, making sure that you know parents have the ability to send their kid to school the way they want to. So there's a lot of huge issues. That is way down the road. It's not anything that I'm planning for. Well, Brother Galloway. Um, so, uh, my, my undergraduate work is in ethnic studies, of which, um, you know, focusing on and, and, and having a, a background in critical race theory is a thing. And I, and, and I got to say, first and foremost, right, that the, the, some of the factual things that are essential about this, um, so, uh, critical race theory, just like many <laughs> philosophical and, 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 um, and, and, and theory-based things are at a collegiate level and collegiate level only. So the idea that that teachers are teaching critical race theory um, is is just already false again. And I think it's another um, example of the same kind of propaganda stuff that was around for the Civil War that convinced the major the majority of whites in the South who were non-slave holding and were poor to support something that was actually the cause of their economic depression in the first place. Right. There's a right. there's a similar through line here. Um, there's also you know there's a folk artist named Larry Long who who um, actually <laughs> wrote the uh with with children in, in community the state children's song of alabama of uh, uh <laughs> freedom or freedom honoring the life of 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 rosa parks he's from okay. minnesota he's the style of woody guthrie pete seeger and all that when he was doing his early work in the south trying to to have communities honor elders in their community he would encounter routinely these questionnaire sheets that said if you in your school see anything around diversity or multiculturalism or all these different words that spoke to you know, any coming together and having a real conversation across uh, racialized experiences or diversity or anything like that to go to run to your school board and interrupt it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, recently in talking to him, he, you know, the same list that was just listed out, um, he said, this looks just like these sheets I was handed in the 60s and 70s going wow. around to do work. And so the, 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 wow. the, the repeating pattern of this, right? And then the other, the other piece is, um, you know, critical race theory has has volumes of scholarship around it. Beverly Tatum's, you know, uh, there's a lot of things that are informed by critical race theory. So if you are having a conversation, let's say around Huck Finn and the use of the N-word in that book in schools, which so many school districts, regardless of political background, have, um, and said, hey, you know what, maybe we should do something about this, or maybe we should add something to 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 make this understandable for children. Well, you've just done critical race theory. You're going to redress That's that in right. all of the other you know, truth-telling around history, um, right. you know, which is not critical race theory. That's just history. <laughs> so, you know, that this this muddies the water quite a bit. And, 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 and the the thing for me, Brother Galloway, is or Reverend Galloway. Hey, let's get it right. Um, put some respect on your name. Um, the thing for me is that this is their pathway to victory. This is their pathway to success. The denial of history, the rejection of truth, the embrace of intentional obtuseness. Like they literally get further, the more ignorant they are. It's like the more village idiot like you are, the further you can get. And the more you're willing to reject truth and the more you're willing to stand in the way of progress, that's your path to victory for a lot of people in this country. Well, you know, one of the one of the, the, the things in here, and, and this is, again, a pattern that we've seen over and over and over again, um, is that if I can find something that gets that that taps into fear, this is one of the problems that I have mm. um, in, in all and a lot of our discourses. It's fear based. Right. It's not not policy based. It's not, um, you know, w again, w what fruits are, are, are going to come at the end. Right. This isn't right. Th there are no questions being asked. There's no wisdom being sought. There is something trying to turn up to say you should be scared of this thing. Um, and, 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 and I get it. We have built a society of you know that has had a dominant cultural space for so long and that is changing regardless of what you do demographics are changing that it just the, the future in 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 just growing number of knowledge is changing that and that can be fearful because there's nothing that's been told to you about how we live there's there's no understanding of what a multicultural uh pluralistic society looks like in real practice because we haven't been practicing it and so the oh, fear yeah, of yeah. not having anything that comes behind it 
you know, it makes it easy to, to play on this or like civil war propaganda to be able to come out and say, you know, what do you think's going to have that insinuation of what do you think's going to happen when all these folks get their freedom and you've been doing this to them all this different time. Right. And so this is to me is following that same same pattern. Mm-mm. Mm, the pattern of preying on their own, uh, their fears to get them to operate against their own best interest. Yeah. Th- that's it. Yeah. No, absolutely. I want to shift gears a little bit and bring in another testimony here. And, and, and this is a pattern for the GOP. This next clip uh, involves General Milley. Um, and before asking him to resign, this representative, Ronnie Jackson from Texas, throws everything at him, including critical race theory, white rage, the Biden administration's quote unquote woke sp- social experiment and January 6th. Let's take a look at that clip. You were two days, just two days prior to when these provinces fell. You were here in our committee on June 23rd. You sat before this committee and you listed some of your concerns that we, we, that we talked in depth about. One was defending critical race theory in the military, telling us you want to understand white rage, telling us how offended you were to be labeled as woke, and worrying about what caused American civilians to enter the Capitol on January 6th. I submit to you that perhaps we would not have had 13 service members and hundreds of Afghans killed, 18 service members wounded, and countless U.S. citizens abandoned and left as Taliban hostages if you had been more focused on your duty to this country instead of defending and pandering to the Biden administration's woke social experiment with the United States military, doing book interviews, and colluding with Chinese military officials. Yesterday, Senator Cotton asked you why you haven't resigned, and you said you were not going to resign just because the president didn't take your advice. Well, I submit to you, sir, that you should resign because of your dereliction of duty to this country and your inability to do your job and protect this country. It has become abundantly clear that the American people have completely lost confidence in your ability to do your job. General Milley, will you now resign? He obviously said no. Um, uh, Reverend Galloway, thoughts on Representative Ronnie Jackson from Texas? Well, <laughs> again, you know, just dealing patterns, right? Um, because, and, and, and let me be clear, there are absolute ways of, of, of saying very similar things in nice ways um, uh, that I hear regardless of political party. So um, I, I, I want to I be clear that running down the that list you know trying to insert something into something else all right is is part of of the concern where we 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 will insert a whole lot of different talking points into something that's supposed to be about something completely different but i i get i get uh you know well versed in 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 weaving in all of these different tropes you know the um in particular, the, the the rage piece, right? And this is important because I, I work in, in in communities where that rage is trying to be stoked, right? And again, because there's an absence of something else. There's an absence of another way to be. And so this becomes effective. Um, you know, this is, this is some of the really important pieces uh, that, that, that come to mind. And, 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 and it's important for us to be able to, to just look at it and say, no, no. <laughs> Um, yeah. and, and, and keep focus on the facts. Again, the, the challenge in, in the bait, right. And that's, that's done with this, this type of, of, I don't, it's, it's, it's really <laughs> straight out of debate class, right? I can lob a whole list of things at you. And then, and, you know, if you take any of the bait to, to follow down that rabbit hole, I got you. Yeah. Cause there's, there's right. too many color traps there to step on. Actually, Dwayne, I I need to throw an audible because there's another example of this um, that is in a clip from um, Ted Cruz. Now, his subject matter was dealing with abortion in Texas, um, but he did the same thing. It's it's the absurdity as if as if we're not sophisticated beyond middle school debate, (laughs) as if we can't spot a red herring and we become proficient at breaking these things down, uh, Anthony. Um, But. It, it feels almost as if taking a moment to be gratified by the fact that we can dissect their fallacies in real time is itself almost a trap because now we wasted time having to dissect their fallacies in real time. What are your thoughts on that? Well, what, and, and it's again, it's 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 it is the challenge and it's the challenge that that people of color, indigenous people, I mean, it, it, 
oftentimes, we, you know, we have we have little understanding. Let's just use the example of our indigenous brothers and sisters for for a minute. Um, it, they, uh, you have the boarding schools, right, under the under the guise of kill the Indian, save the man, that removed generations right um uh, uh, the head of the national boarding school healing coalition christine mendizi um you know was at a, was giving a talk recently and she talked about the fact that prior to boarding schools people could trace lineage thousands of years then the boarding schools happened and for six generations and then adoptions you know were, were implicated the same thing of removing people from their language their families and that history right has leaves a stain and mark and then at the same time we, it's not to the mid 70s that that native peoples get the right to even practice their ceremonies in the in the in the uh, Indian Religious Free, uh, Freedoms Act in the 70s so you can't even practice your traditional tribal uh, uh um, uh, practices, you know, in, until the seventies, and so all of that history is unknown to so many people. So whenever somebody from the indigenous communities has to speak to an issue, they also have to spend time trying to educate so to everybody because the the context around what they're about to say requires so much information that very little people have. So they're stuck mm-hmm. having to have that conversation. I think it's another it's another example of what you just said that <laughs> to bring any intellect or to bring any any nuance or contextual thinking or critical thinking to the table in order to do that, I have my the burden on me is so much greater than the mm-hmm. bullet talking points that you've just lobbed into the That's room right. and no That's matter right. what, I have to spend my time otherwise nobody's going to understand understand the thing i've got to say so it, it's yeah. it is problematic for folks of color already who are already at a disadvantage with this type of 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 thinking but i i think they didn't calculate for the fact that we would just speed up our processing time that we would just be able to debunk <laughs> them in real time and that if we needed to catalog all the information necessary on the internet in order to call them for what they are liars that we would accommodate so it's kind of like the evolution of the argument i think they've created some monsters in the form of people like you brother galloway and i want to get your opinion on this next clip um this is the first clip i want to play is from act tv um it is a clip of protest that took place outside of joe manchin senator joe manchin of west virginia and his yacht now i did not even know this man had a yacht the absurdity of it all, a man who's riding around and owns a yacht, keeping America from getting everything that we need from voting rights to an infrastructure bill. Um, these are the voices of the protesters that stood outside of Joe Manchin's yacht. And this footage is from Act TV. And I want to identify a couple of the protest groups um, that are a part of this. Um, the Young West Virginia Race Matters, West Virginia, Center for Popular Democracy Action, CASA, and Greenpeace USA. Let's take a listen to the protesters. It shouldn't be this hard to get our elected officials to work for us. Well, especially because West Virginia has been really hurt by COVID. It's been really, it's going to be really hurt by the climate crisis. People were barely keeping their heads above, above water before, and if we don't get this aid, our state is going to be in much worse shape than before. We want a home that is safe and equitable and and, and where we have health care and our businesses are supported. Um, all of this is within reach. We just need our elected officials to listen to us. I never realized how fragile democracy and freedoms are. I have other things I should be doing in West Virginia, but I'm here today because I want to testify to the fact that there was some Someone standing up for people in West Virginia because from what we hear, Joe Manchin's not listening to us. He could be have a legacy of a man who fought for the average person, but instead he's fighting for big pharma and big money. That's not who West Virginians are. He should fight for Medicare and extended health benefits because in West Virginia we have one of the largest elderly uh, populations. Brother Galloway, Anthony, the imagery of those tugboats um, protesting against the Goliath of his yacht um, and for him to be standing in the way. We have other clips, but I just wanted to get your thoughts right there. So um, I'm having a little audio um, issue on my side. I'm not able to hear the the, the B-roll. Um, so you're going to have to help me in some of the things that they said. Um, I want to point out, though, um, that some folks may be looking at these images out of West Virginia and in um, seeing the multiracial group that's there. Uh, my family's from West Virginia. So, um, you know, there's this really interesting in- intersection in Appalachia um, between black communities and Appalachian white, uh, poor white communities that I think is is is. 
wonderful spa- wonderful space for some of the intersection and challenges between folks. But I just want to point out, look at the multiracial group of folks who are trying mm-hmm. to call out the, you know, to trying to call out what they see is 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 something that doesn't compute. Um, mm. Now, I, I also understand that Joe Manchin's in a very precarious space because part of his success in even being in office in West from from West Virginia is being able to walk this line, and mm. so he, he may he may feel that this is part of that line that that he has to walk in order to 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 um, to 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 be reelected. And of course, this is this is part of the challenge right is you you, you have a yacht um yeah, and yet a bunch of exactly. folks are seeing the kind of infrastructure that we saw in in the um fdr um time frame with our with the with the in in, in the eisenhower time frame of of the public works administration right that's right um trying to put folks to work and get out of this major thing that has happened to our country and so it it it, it makes sense that you would see some folks stepping out and saying hey you're standing in between me getting some of the relief that i need and let me also point out um that again in here is a trope that i think we need to 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 to, to uncover before it becomes a, a a dog with too much more of a dog whistle and that is this idea of entitlement all right. This idea of of, yes. you know, this the folks becoming dependent on um, a, a handout or anything like that. Um, that just isn't true in any of the data. Right. Even for the mm-hmm. folks who work, the idea that people are just sitting this this, this idea of the person just sitting there um, subsisting off of government handout is just not true. Folks work mm. <laughs> and folks right. work hard. And folks that's work right. hard and aren't paid their worth. And so, and that's just, that's just, just bored out and across the data. And so that also I see kind of happening in the background here. It's funny because even though you couldn't hear the audio, you actually just completely nailed the essence of what they were saying in the protest. Um, and, and then actually you extended it even further because the next clip is of Joe Manchin. As he um, basically says that he's not going to accept an economy um, or a society that has an entitlement mentality, literally word for word, what you were just saying. Let's take a look at that clip. Means testing means that do you are we targeting the people that need it or getting it or the people getting it that maybe could do without? I and mean, they're in pretty good shape. Work requirements, those are all very, very important. So you have the beginning of life, our children. Pre-K, yes. Then you have the end where our senior citizens want to live in the dignity and respect of their own home. We can do that with some assistance. And again, some can pay, some can pay a little bit, and some can't pay any. That's means testing. I cannot accept our, our economy or basically our society moving towards a entitlement mentality. I'm more of a rewarding because I can help those who really need help if those who can help themselves do so. I've never been a liberal in any way, shape, or the form. There's no one has ever thought I was. I have voted pretty consistently all my whole life. I don't fault any of them who believe that they're much more progressive and much more liberal. God bless them. And all they need to do is we have to elect more, I guess, for them to get theirs, elect more liberals. My top line has been 1.5 because I believe in my heart that what we can do and what the needs we have right now and what we can afford to do without basically changing our whole society to an entitlement mentality. What an absurd moment that the progress of not only this country, but dare I say humanity is at the mercy of such a mediocre white man, Brother Galloway. <laughs> you just you always know, gonna toss me you always toss me a whole whole bag. All right. Um <laughs> So, <laughs> and thanks. I could hear the audio that time. The the um, uh, just just on some technical pieces. Means testing is something that is a is a part of every single thing that comes through. Nobody. It's it's it, this is again. You know, uh, uh, calling to something that isn't isn't real. Everything is means tested. It, 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 mm. There's nobody who means test more than the U.S. government under any in any administration, because at some point somebody's got to turn around and, and account for whether or not something got spent right. And and so mm. that red tape is long and it's huge and nobody's ever going to be 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 out of means testing. And so to bring that forward, I, it again, comes to this trope that somehow folks don't work for what they've got. And then I have no problem with being a t- in a society of entitlement. We do the work. We write the bills we pay the money 
And we expect that to come back to us in ways that are going to help us. And, 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 and so I think there's a really philosophical shift here, right? Now, I have a particular bent on it because I come from a faith tradition um, where somebody kicked out, somebody very important, kicked out money changers in a temple where he used to learn as a child somebody. and then came and then invited who? Children and, and the old and, and the folks who are in need. Um, and then didn't have a question about whether or not that need is yours because that's between you and your God. Um, right. It, you know, it, 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 and so that that piece I think is 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 is, is challenging. And then this idea um, that I've never been a liberal, um, mm. I think, needs to, to to zoom out a little bit because we're talking about it in the, in the myopic context of the United States. Um, we are a liberal society. <laughs> And so, you know, the call out there is not to the technical term of the liberal. That call out is to a very specific group of folks, which I think is another dog whistle. It's another That's dog right. whistle for folks who are trying to hold to move some different accountability and standing in the way of it. Let's just be clear. If I have two opposing sides and I can be somebody who neither side can count fully on their own, that comes with power. And that's how part of our two party system, um, you know, is, you know, sets up folks to have power just by be not going all the way along with either side in, 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 in Senator Manchin and other folks have kind of used that throughout the years to amass certain amounts of power um, in that that's not that absolutely there. This conversation also comes back when we talk about the Electoral College. Um, it was Governor Wallace out of Alabama mm. who, again, inserted something that wasn't that wasn't there. And everybody was pretty much on the same page to abolish that until it was made into a political trope. And then we voted against yeah. the actually prevailing wisdom of everybody there until somebody throws us in there and go and changes everybody's mind off, off of something that's not based in reality. Funny how it's like they make up the rules in the middle of the game to make sure that they always win. That's kind of what I'm feeling like. It's, it's almost like a uh, child's play. Like they just create something out of nothing just so that they can have the opportunity to maintain their power. Uh, Brother Galloway, you have a few minutes to hang out with us in the next segment. Yes. Um, we have coming up Dr. El Syed. Uh, we're going to be speaking with him about vaccine misinformation. And coming up at yes. 9 o'clock at the uh, Like It or Not Hour, we'll be speaking with uh, the candidate for the mayorship of Buffalo, New York, uh, India, uh, Walton. And we'll be discussing the unfortunate events around a sore loser in the city. All of that's coming up more. Uh, but before we get out of here, Brother Galloway, and we uh, move to uh, DJ Exclusive, I just want to, I, I just got to kind of pause for a second and, and, and reflect on the, the part of what you identified, right? How this is syst systematic, it is almost predictable because of how the patterns have replicated itself through history. And then now we're adapting. We're having to adapt because our very survival, and I, I mean very specifically, like even our communication right now, what you and I are doing, it is a part of that adaptation because it is necessary for our survival. Um, they've gotten away with it for so long, but don't you think that they should look over their shoulder because there's like an entire new wave of opposition that is coming in reaction to all of their absurdities? Well, it, you know, it, it, it reminds me of, of the quote, which has been around in African philosophical circles, but we, we often attribute it to Socrates, right? The, op the opposite of, of peace is not war. Uh, opposite of war is not peace, it's creation. And so you know, what you're speaking to is a generation that's creating something new, right? Uh, there, there's, there's, there's this, this, this growing disillusionment with the system of always, we've always had it. And so now I want to move to creating something that's different, something that um, doesn't even play within the context of, of our own rules. And so I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if folks figured out as we have, as, as black community has, as communities of color have for a long time in creating their own systems to, to do something internally and take care of the needs without the need for something else. And I think um, that is something that's got to be thought about is, is what happens when folks like the AME church, okay, I'm not finding um, respect for my own humanity in that space. We're going to start our own institution mm -hmm. and we're going to do that. And from that institution, we get HBCUs, we get um, um, whole societies around education, we get circuit preachers, we get all of these mm -hmm. different things from creating our own. And I think we need to take something out of that rule book. And we get the likes of none other than Reverend Anthony Galloway, uh, part of that Ashe. evolution, if you would. That's all the time we have this morning for On the Clock. Stick around for more on The Benjamin Dixon Show. Prescription drug pricing points to corporate mountain.
Freedom of the press is about your right to know. It's about your right to be informed. Today, no. there are real threats to press freedom and your right to know about the world around us. We must protect our right to know, no matter what kind of news is important to you. Before it's too late, understand the threats. Protectpressfreedom.org. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Y'all know who it is. It's your boy, DJ Exclusive. James Bubba Williams is in the building getting everything situated and set up. Y'all hope y'all having a good morning thus far. I know I am. Y'all make sure y'all stay tuned. We got more coming up next on the Benjamin Dixon Show. It might help if y'all have my music. Boom. There it is. <laughs> I hear him chat with the boys, nice so tough, but nice keep talking. Yeah. Just too sharp with the prize. White girls let it tell me I'm awesome. Yeah. Good morning, like y'all. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. I hope y'all doing well, man. Good morning, everybody. Make sure y'all stay tuned. We got more coming up next. Good morning. Let out the let out the head out the wake up, get out the sheets. We came for one man, forget my peace. We take the west side, take on the east. I'ma put them in the cage, never let out the let out the I hear him chat to the noise, move too quick, can't stop for the talking. I hear him chat with the boys, not so tough, but not to keep talking. Yeah. Just too sharp with the prize, white girls, never tell me I'm awesome. Yeah. Pat like fire on the pan, if you want to touch me, I'm please use caution. Yeah. Beg, please get on your knees, came from the jungle, up in the trees. I got a few tricks up in the sleeve, one wrong move, I'ma let out the, let out the, let out the. Big shoes, check out the crease, blow like I'm big foot, step on the beat. Good morning, everybody, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Hope y'all are doing down. well today. Man. Good morning, everybody. Sunny right, Tiger. Good morning. Happy birthday, Tiger! Woo! Happy birthday, brother Tiger. Hope you're having a good morning. That's why, man, we can make sure we do right, okay? Sunny right. Good morning, y'all. Ooh, Dr. Dragon. Good morning. Stop that. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Make sure you come on in, get your coffee, your tea, your drink, your beverage, whatever it is that you need to get your morning started. And it'll be great, man. Yeah, they're trying to figure out what this echo is in the background. They don't know as my other computer volume is up because I haven't had a chance to turn it down yet. That's why y'all hear echo. <laughs> I love it when they listen in the background trying to figure stuff out. They be looking crazy and everything. I love it. <laughs> I know, but I ain't got time to turn it down yet. Tell them I need my money right now. Brought me the juice, they stole out my crown. <laughs> Tiger, thank you for your super chat. You. Tiger said, hold on, let me read what Tiger you. said for y'all. I'm gonna recoup it. Tiger said, happy birthday to me. How much I got to drop for y'all to drop my cash up on PayPal? Your boy out here struggling. <laughs> really, Tiger, really. Happy birthday, Tiger, again. Can't give this. Thank you for your super chat. Cat give me says, good morning, Tiger. Thank you. 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 Yeah. Try to block my blessings 
since Been only for comparisons What's from me will be from me Yeah, I'ma go through Alright y'all, y'all stay Just tuned But pay me what you yep. me for Make what the you stream, been saying about me the Benjamin Dixon, y'all Tell him I need my money right now Yeah, welcome back to the screen. I'm sorry to tell you, I know my value. The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash the BPD show. Welcome back, everybody. It is Friday, October 1st, 2021. On the screen with me now is none other than my brothers from other mothers, uh, Reverend, the right Reverend Anthony Galloway. How you doing, man? <laughs> I'm blessed. I'm blessed. And then none other than DJ exclusive on the one and twos. Brother James, how you doing, man? Man, tired and tired, but I'm here. Good morning. <laughs> listen, man, listen, I, I want I want the world to know that I was like, you know what? We're going to give everybody off yesterday because you all stepped in and you came in. To, man, I, I two for two, two weeks in a row. I promised you a day off and two weeks in a row you had to come in on your day off. So, brother, thank you for that. And I hope you mm-hmm. got some rest yesterday. <laughs> Mm-mm. You know, just because I'm off on one job, the world don't it, it keep will keep turning. Had to go to the other one, two of them. Big will <laughs> keep on turning. Listen, I want to get, a, get a, 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 a quick update on the last story we we're covering about Joe Manchin. President Biden on Thursday signed a stopgap bill that would keep the government funded through early December, narrowly at averting a government shutdown. Now, this is coming from the Hill dot com with just hours remaining yesterday to avoid a government shutdown. The House and Senate each passed a continuing resolution earlier Thursday. The bill funds government operations through December 3rd and includes $28.6 billion in additional disaster relief and $6.3 billion for Afghan refugee resettlement as requested by the White House. Uh, Brother Galloway, we're going to be joined momentarily by um, Dr. Syed um, uh, and we're going to be talking about an an entirely different subject. But before we broach the subject of, of vaccine misinformation, how many times have we seen the pattern of this same game back and forth over whether or not <laughs> they're going to fund their own government? The um, so so the pattern here, you know, this it's funny this this intersects into some of the spiritual care work that I have to be involved in that is providing stabilization in spaces and in times of people folks lives when there's destable because when we're destable we we tend to make erroneous decisions and we never get um, a resting period from that anxiety inducing up and down right that toxic stress that we talk about so often and so this is an another example that that of that in a national scale. Um, you know, it used to be that that this was not something that we would do regularly. You know, that that, that the, the funding the government was never uh, something that we had to think about. And in that in a stabilizing force, everybody's not going to get what they want, and it's going to take longer to do to do certain things. But you don't have the up and down destabilization because we have this destabilization that allows for self engineered anxiety that induces a toxic stress pattern. I think we're seeing that on a national scale, and that's something that to, to be concerned about, which makes institutions that do stabilize so much more important now. And so, you know, it, it that's that's what I'm seeing as a pattern happening here, which is, of course, problematic. And again, I want to point out, <laughs> this the same thing doesn't happen this way in parliamentary systems. Mm. Mm. Now you're going to make me dig a little deeper. How much time do we have? We have about four minutes before our first guest comes, because let me go back to that, that, that pattern. You're saying that you recognize this from your ministerial care, where it's this, this it sounds like it's this manufactured, manufactured anxiety that could be taken advantage of with, by the people who create the anxiety. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. 
Yeah, and it's something that I hear from our, our, our mental health professionals that we, you know, help connect folks to, right? Is is that if I can stabilize the things around, right? And 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 my part can be, you know, stabilizing housing or helping you to get food so it's not one of the considerations that you have to, to make. If you have food insecurity and all these things that can stabilize the forces around, that person can then take the breath and the time to heal, to work with their mental health professionals, to oh. to get on their stable feet. And so if we don't have those stabilizing forces, then the decisions that we make become erroneous decisions that aren't long term stable decisions. Oh, now I get it. They keep. For whatever reason, James, it sounds like we're being kept in a constant state of panic. So that we don't even realize they got us acting crazy out here, responding in ways that are detrimental to our own selves. And I'm going to bring it a little, a little closer to home because because it reminds me of how they keep us so desperate to pay our bills. They keep us so desperate to keep our lights on. They keep us so desperate to get to, to for food. And they've monetized. They've like legit monetized um, all the things we need to survive. And then, of course, when you got people that desperate, of course, you could call them in in the middle of a pandemic. Of course, you could make them sit in the <laughs> cubicles when people are coughing COVID-19 all over the place because they have us in that constant state of anxiety. Mm, what you think? It, it, it's, go ahead. No, I don't know. I was oh, going to oh. say they, they, they're playing the squid game with us. That's what it is. Go ahead, Anthony. <laughs> well, I, I just want to liken it real quick to, um, I mean, uh, <laughs> let's, let's look at ourselves. Right? It's the same patterns that abusers use. Whether it's spousal abuse, whether it's child mm. abuse, if I keep you yep. unstable, it's the yep. same way that we gaslight black women. <laughs> mm. I keep you unstable. I keep you thinking that you're crazy. I keep you doing all these things around. I mean, it's the, this, the pattern, unfortunately, is permeating a large part of our society. Mm. Got another update here uh, in, with regard to... Um, this constant state of anxiety that the government keeps us in because we're all so afraid of government shutdown. I think they learned back in the Clinton era how effective the government shutdown was uh, for the news cycle to keep us all fighting each other and being concerned in the news cycle. But here's another update uh, from our producer and from The Guardian. Uh, Nancy Pelosi delayed Thursday night vote on bipartisan infrastructure bill after progressives revolted, refusing to vote for it without the larger reconciliation bill um it sounds like business was as usual but there's people in there who are trying to make enough noise anthony to actually get something done yeah i mean <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe i don't know what do you read in it <laughs> again you know i'm in the business of making space for folks you know to to, to so we can come to some some long-term decisions and 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 folks are supposed to in this environment, in that arena, advocate, right, and 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 push push the strategy and advocate to get to get things across. But at some point, we have to be able to say, "All right, let me stop. <laughs> let me feel the wind. Let me see feel my feet onto the ground. Let me mm. look out long distance." And and you know that's the business that I'm in. And so, how can we do that? Is the question that comes to mind on a national level. Because we, because right now there's no space to to sit back and breathe and make decisions, and I think this is another example of 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 that where something that should have been routine in parliamentary procedure um, that I'm going to push for this larger thing because that's what I'm called here to do. This is the argument, but because we're so focused in it, we apply it to to something bigger than it is. That's that's my read on this is that you know this is the kind of jockeying that happens when we and, and now we've got an arena and now we get to see it happening where before we sent the representatives and then we looked for the outcomes at the end and we didn't see all the minutiae in between. So, mm. so it's just, it's a different world. Mm. Mm. It's a different world than where I come from. Um, let's take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to be speaking um, with Dr. Abdul El Syed. Uh, he's a physician and physician and epidemiologist. And we're going to be talking about the COVID misinformation, more specifically the vaccine misinformation that is uh, a pandemic in and of itself. We'll be right back uh, with more right after this break. All right, y'all, make sure you stay tuned. You do not want to miss the next segment coming up. So make sure you stay tuned. Good morning again, everybody. And I get my coffee. Yeah, coffee. Coffee. 
Yeah. Hey, come on now. Hey, hey. Good morning, everybody. Again, good morning, Mama and Daddy. Good morning, everybody. I'm streaming from Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, wherever you're shooting from, man. Good morning to you. Laura Strada, good morning. Hollywood, good morning. Sunny. <laughs> I'm XXO, XX Bob. I get that mess up every time. Courtney, good morning. One Source Productions, Brenda Johnson, Courtney, Brother Latif, good morning. KMZ, what's going on, brother? Got off Chuck Gizzo. What's going on, Chuck? Good morning, everybody. Look, I'm in line with the stars. I'm in sync with the earth. Ten toes deep. GP, good morning to you. I never switch sides. Like, even when That's I die, I'm a good morning. On and on it goes. Good morning, the Roller Dragon. Good morning. I've been on the vibe kind of hard to describe. I'm in between. I'm good Boom, in the time, but I'm tired good of the grind. Good morning. A lady just wanted to say good morning to you. I realize I'm in the middle of the time of my life. I'm never so packed for the stack. Never hey, hey, good morning. Since you call the way, good morning. Good morning. Oh, but don't worry. Next week is going down. Patreon.com slash like it or not. Patreon.com slash like it or not. Patreon.com slash the VT show. Next week, Patreon party next Friday. Don't worry. It's going to be an 80s, 90s party. So come dress in your 80s, 90s attire. Patreon party next week, man. Patreon.com. Go ahead, join ASAP. Get in there, all right? Make sure you stay tuned. Brenda Johnson, good morning. Boondocks, good morning to you. Samaya, good morning. Boom, me, Eric Fuller, good morning. What's going on there? Hey, my son, Kane. My nephew, Kane. Amber, good morning, Amber. My eyes blurry, but I couldn't see that. And he cleared down. Start to feel like I'm on one. Instead of land, I'll be here for the long run. I'm a slave for the cash, got snakes in the grass, no brakes on the head, but it's all fun. We done seen it all, heard it all. Melody Dennis, good morning to you. Lily, good morning. Well, need a good morning. I'm all 12 missed calls, and I still made a curtain call. Need to light it up, lighten up. Hear him talking, they ain't right enough, tighten up. Everything that I came for, I left with. I don't bang sets, I just bang on the set list. Going past something when I came for the breakfast. Put me in your prayer. I might put you on a guest list Young, tell me reckless Gold in my soul, got the same on my necklace All right, y'all, y'all, welcome back to the screen My brother from another mother Benjamin Dixon and Anthony Galloway Good morning, y'all Welcome back Welcome back. Joining us now is none other than Dr. Abdul El Sayed. He is a physician, epidemiologist, former city health director of Detroit and candidate for governor of Michigan in 2018 and friend of the show. Dr. El Sayed, thank you so much for joining us. How are you this morning? I'm well. I'm grateful. Uh, We're here together. Have some uh, good conversation in front of us and I appreciate you having me on. The pleasure is ours. I want to especially dig right into what it is that uh, you do so well. You're able to help cut through the noise. Um, And particularly in the black community, we find um, we it's the same phenomenon in every community. They're always going to be reactionaries who happily take information and twist it for their own purposes. We're talking specifically in this case about the pandemic and the vaccine. We've seen this phenomenon in almost everything. But the first thing I want to have you to weigh in on is, did you ever think as a professional, as a doctor, as a rational actor, that there would be so many people who would play games with their own lives in this pandemic? You know, I think a lot of us thought that in the moment that we actually had vaccines, something you could do to protect yourself and your folks, that people would do it. Right. In the early days of the vaccine of the pandemic. There was we we had lockdowns. There was social distancing. Uh, we we even had masks, which were uh, what 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 we used to protect each other from from one another. Uh, but we thought that you know once you could get a couple of shots, that that would be the end of it. People would just do it, and we'd all move on. We could clear this pandemic, not have to continue to think about it, look over our shoulders uh, every single day. But but the fact is, is that unfortunately the politicization and the misinformation of uh, this vaccine uh, of this moment in this pandemic generally of science and expertise has led us to a point now where, unfortunately, nearly 45 percent of Americans are still unvaccinated. And we're number 48 in the world. Right. And our companies, our government invested 
uh, in, in producing this vaccine. We're number 48 in the world. Mm. Mm. Brother Galloway. It's, so, you know, one of the things that um, we see is, is some of the, our, our historical experiences coming to bear as part of the misinformation that, that you know, some of the undercurrents of the misinformation that comes in. So I, I get a swath of folks who are just nervous and then they will, will apply whatever they want to for that nervousness. What are some of the most egregious things that you're encountering um, uh, in this misinformation field about, about the vaccine and what it might do to you? Mm. Well, what makes the, 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 the vaccine misinformation powerful is when it plays to something that's, that's intimate, right? So you hear this is going to cause orchitis, which is a fancy way for saying that your balls are going to swell up, right? You hear that this is going to cause, uh, cause, cause lost pregnancies and infertility. Mm. Um, and, uh, and, and then you hear about uh, the notion that there are these alternatives. And it just so happens to be that a lot of the folks who are pushing the misinformation happen to be selling the alternatives, right? And this has been a ploy that snake oil salesmen have been using since the dawn of time, right? To tell you, you can't trust those folks over there, but I've got something just for you. Um, mm. And they'll trot out a story uh, or another and say, look, this is what this did for this person. This is what did this, this did for this person. And of course, there's no, uh, no science or, or no evidence behind uh, what they're selling. The, the other thing is I do want to speak to the fact that there is a, uh, a real reason why I think folks in the black community in particular uh, have a lot to be skeptical about when it comes to <clears throat> when it comes to the establishment, uh, whether it's the political establishment or it's the it's the scientific establishment. Uh, we've seen people in the name of medicine do some terrible things uh, to yeah. black folks in history. And that's the thing. It didn't just end in history. I, I don't know any black folks uh, in, in my immediate circle who haven't been mistreated, haven't been. Uh, the victims of racism in the the, the healthcare setting uh, today, right? And so we've got to deal with that and, and the reality that, uh, unfortunately, folks who've worn the white coat have too often um, have too often been uh, purveyors of racism. That being said, mm. right? Um, mm. When we look at where we are right now, and we look at the degree of loss in the black community to COVID nineteen, the fact that again, almost everybody I know knows somebody uh, that they've lost or knows someone who lost someone. We got to ask, yeah. when is enough enough? And when are we going to do the thing that's finally going to get us past this pandemic and back to the kind of life where we don't have to look over our shoulder? And, you know, I, I get the hesitation. I was the health commissioner in the city of Detroit. And even before uh, COVID, we had low vaccination rates because folks said, you know what? I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. But my, my point is, OK, if you don't know, learn. Right. The, the evidence is out there. Talk to the folks who do know. Find um, the, 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 the folks from the community uh, who have uh, access to that information, who have uh, the scientific training and medical training and say, look, all right, tell me, tell me what I need to know. What are, what are the facts about this vaccine? What, uh, how, what the, what's the research that went into it? Um, how has it been tested? Uh, and what can I expect? And uh, you'll find that um, that information is a lot more solid, a lot better tested than, you know, your cousin's former dog owner's best friend's uh, uh, <laughs> former nephew, right, who, who posted something on Facebook. That's right. And because that's that's kind of where we are. Right. I'm, I'm laughing, but it's very true. People are taking the advice of these sidewall counselors and these overnight epidemiologists and they're playing with their lives as a matter of course. But you, you, you hit on something. You said everybody that throws on the white lab coat hasn't done something good. And there's been racism done in that name. And it's because of that that we now have people, other people who can now throw on lab coats and present themselves as if they are literally the front line of defense in this pandemic present themselves with the branding of the name frontline workers. And at the end of the day, I've covered them extensively. Um, they are a part of that cabal that are snake oil, snakes, uh, oil salesmen. Um, talk to me about your understanding and how you've been tracking the frontline doctors that are at the epicenter of um, the ivermectin craze. Yeah, that is, yeah. it is so frustrating. And I, I want to just piggyback off your point there for a second. You know, it, it is, the second way that racism can affect the black community is when uh, we allow the consequences of historical racism to continue to create disparities in access to a life-saving uh, vaccine on. today, right? And, and we have to recognize that uh, when we allow that to hang over us, when we fail to take on uh, the misinformation, when we don't engage uh, our own leaders from our communities. I say this as, a, as an Arab American, and we've got a lot of vaccine hesitancy in the Arab American community as well. But when we are unwilling to go that extra mile and say, all right, let me separate truth from falsehood, um, then the consequences still fall back on our communities. And I think we got a responsibility to take that on. 
the 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 ivermectin thing is just absurd. Look, I, I wanna I wanna explain um, sort of just give you a metaphor for thinking about uh, the value of scientific information. Right? If you heard from uh, a, a third cousin that someone in the family uh, that you're close to, right, had had passed away or something bad happened to them, that's one form of information. And then you know maybe you hear from that person's own kid about what happened. Which of the pieces of information do you? value most, right? There's what I'm, what I'm saying here is that there's a hierarchy of information, right? When it's coming from the source, you believe it a lot better. Ivermectin mm-hmm. is a medication that's been used to, to treat uh, parasitic infection, which is different than viral infection for a long time, right? And uh, that's not to say that it is unsafe on its own, but nobody has produced high quality, rigorous evidence to show that in fact, it is effective at treating COVID-19. And that's the burden of proof, right? That's the difference right. between saying, well, I heard from all the way over there that something happens to somebody here versus saying, I heard it from the source that something happened. And so mm. the hard part is that folks are using this uh, really poor quality information, uh, what we call observational evidence, rather than clinical trials to show that ivermectin is effective. And you know what? Ivermectin very much could be effective. But the problem is we don't know at what dose, you know, in, in, in what um, distribution, right, and, uh, and in what moment in the disease process, uh, that it would be effective if there was even evidence to show that it is effective. And so the point here is, is that you've got this hearsay saying that ivermectin is the cure to COVID-19. We've heard this all before uh, with hydroxychloroquine with no right. high quality evidence. And let's be clear, every medication, including the vaccines, right, has a side effect profile. The problem is, is that the side effect profile for, for ivermectin in the doses uh, and, you know, in the form that people are taking it, you know, uh, uh, horse medication bought at Tractor Supply, Right. The 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 um, the side effect profile is pretty bad. And we know the side effect profile of the vaccine, which is actually really, really good. Right. And so right. at some point when you're using an unproven medication that has a really poor uh, 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 side effect profile in a form that it's not supposed to be taken by human beings, instead of taking a vaccine that is extremely effective per reams and reams of data. Right. And has a very well understood and very good side effect profile relatively. Then I have to ask to what end and why. And so Mm. uh, it's sad to see physicians who uh, have been trained in science uh, jumping on this highly unscientific bandwagon, uh, Mm. misleading a lot of people. And uh, ultimately, who loses the folks who take ivermectin and everyone else who um, who is not taking the vaccine because of it? I you know, you. Speaking of people who should know better because they claim to lay hold on the scientific method and leading people astray, I offer into evidence, Rand Paul, um, as he has done so many times throughout the pandemic, sowing the seeds of misinformation and simultaneously trying to convince everyone that he is a scientific voice that should be listened to. Let's take a listen to Senator Rand Paul from Kentucky. Don't you understand that it's presumptuous for you to be in charge of all the science? Have you ever heard of a second opinion? I can't go to my doctor and ask my doctor's opinion? I mean, this is, is, is incredibly arrogant combined with this authoritarian nature that you think, well, we'll just tell all of America to do what I say and they better or we'll find them or put them in jail or not let them go to school or not let them travel. The science is against you on this. The science is clear. Naturally acquired immunity is as good as a vaccine. The Israel study actually showing it better. This isn't an argument against the vaccine, but it's an argument for letting people make a decision who already have immunity. You're not willing to consider natural immunity? Senator, our team has reviewed every study that's out there on COVID, whether it's from Israel, from the U.S., or wherever else. They have used the facts that have been provided through the uh, rigorous research that's been done to reach a conclusion. 660-odd thousand Americans and more have died because of COVID. We're trying to do everything we can to save as many as possible. We're using the facts. We're following the science and following the law. The second voice was uh, uh, HHS Secretary Xavier uh, Becerra. I, I just the, the absurdity of it. Um, Dr. El said, what are your thoughts? I mean, he is trying to make an argument against the vaccine. That's exactly what he's trying to do. And the thing about acquired immunity is that you know how you acquire immunity without getting a vaccine? You get sick. So he's actually advocating for people to get sick from COVID-19 so that then they can't get COVID-19 again. It kind of defeats the purpose, especially given the fact that you have a safe and effective vaccine that gives you immunity without having to get sick in the first place. And, and here's the point. 
right? If you're healthy, yes, you may take your chances of getting sick with COVID-19, but you don't know that you're not going to pass it to somebody who's not and that they're going to get really sick. And on top of that, you don't know that if you get infected with COVID-19, that you're not going to be one of like the 30% of people who end up having long COVID. And here's the crazy thing. There are people who have asymptomatic COVID infections that then become symptomatic over time. And they have these wow. odd symptoms like, you know, memory loss and, uh, and, and, and brain fog. And so my point is, is if you have a safe and effective vaccine that is free at the point of care, that can prevent you from getting sick and vastly decrease the probability that you make other people sick without the potential long-term consequences that 30% of people who are getting infected face, why in hell are we advocating against it? And here's the Mm -hmm. thing, right? You got to always ask what's in it for them. Well, you know what's in it for Rand Paul? He's got a base of people who've been politicized and misinformed by the former president And they see it every day on Facebook, and he's trying to play to them because he thinks it ups his political standing in Kentucky. And if we want to have a political discourse dominated by a bunch of misinformed, politicized people in Kentucky, then we can keep listening to Rand Paul. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> brother, Ga- this, uh, brother Galloway, this, <laughs> uh, uh, Dr. El say you, 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 you hit on something that's, that's very important, right? This, this questioning of natural immunity versus doing something to not get sick in the first place. There's a whole lot of folks in the communities that I serve who will listen to what Ram Paul just said and, and not for, for any political reason, but they're already nervous. And then I hear something like this and I go, okay, cool. I can just take my chances when we also know what the numbers are, and you could probably speak to it better than anybody um, in our own community about how we survive and how we deal because of the the, the complications that are here. I mean, I, the hospice care rotation in in, in in here is 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 it was horrible. I have a cousin who's a traveling COVID nurse who had to wheel a wife in to say goodbye to her husband. Both of them affected with COVID, um, and, you know, and so. It, there's a whole swath of folks who would listen to this and and go, well, I'm already nervous. Oh, the national nat- natural immunity thing. Yeah, I'm going to do that because um, I'm nervous about everything in the world right now. And it's mm. ca- and, it, and it causes a whole lot of folks to be able to use that as a quote. Um, and, and so what would you say to folks who are who are just nervous i know there's the the research i know there's the you can throw the data at them all the time, but it's not cutting through to the emotional uh, you know, line that's being tapped by misinformers like Rand Paul, you know, what are some of the ways that you, you get to folks who are stuck in that space and going, I'm so nervous about everything. Let me just grab on the easiest thing, which tends to be misinformation because it doesn't need to worry about being real or being evidentiary at all. How do you, yeah, how right are you right. finding ways to cut through that? No, I really, really appreciate your point. And, you know, again, I'll speak to, to my community and the Arab American community. And there's a, there's a way in which Right. We want to we want to um, fight for our inclusion. But at the same time, we allow um, <laughs> Ill, ill-meaning, ill-meaning old white guys from in, in positions of power uh, to have undue influence on the way that we think about the world. And, uh, you know, if you, if you just sort of think about the, the overall impact of um, <laughs> senators from Kentucky on the well-being of, of communities of color in this country, uh, they don't have a very good track record. And so in some respects, I hear that, um, that that folks sort of don't want to to, 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 to to move beyond the status quo. They say, well, the step of putting a, uh, a vaccination in my arm uh, seems to be a lot more um, a lot more dangerous than, uh, than 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 just engaging with the status quo. And if there's this dude here who's saying that there's this natural immunity thing, then I should be OK. But here's mm. the point and here's the context that I want folks to remember. We are in the midst of a global pandemic that has taken nearly 5 million lives abroad and 700,000 lives at home. Almost all of us know somebody who's lost someone if we don't know somebody who's been lost to us uh, because of this pandemic. This isn't a a status quo moment. This is a beat the pandemic moment. And the risks of getting COVID-19, right, to get to that acquired immunity are so much worse than the risks uh, of taking the vaccine to prevent that virus from getting in your body, uh, from uh, potentially taking your life, uh, or from leaving you with side effects over the next, uh, you know, three months to, 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 to who, know how, who knows how long. Um, and, and so you've got to remember that we're, we're doing this in context. Like if you came up to me before the pandemic and said, hey, should, should I take this vaccine? I'd be like, no. Well, why would you do that? What's the point? Here, right in the middle of the pandemic, the whole context has changed. 
So the point of taking the vaccine is to prevent yourself from the risk of getting the pandemic, I mean, getting the, the virus, uh, which in the course of the pandemic is substantially more likely. Um, I also just want to speak to like the, the, the nature of anxiety. I get it. man. People are sick and tired of this thing. All of us would rather be ostriches right now. We just bury our head in the sands and pretend like this thing is over. It's not. Mm -hmm. And um, unless we all do the proactive thing that we can do to protect ourselves and the people around us, it is not going to be over. Um, you know, and, and, and you got this news now of cases are going to be on the decline. And uh, so we should be good to go. But a lot of that implies that more people are getting vaccinated. Right? right. And that we don't have a new variant that crops up somewhere uh, in someone's body who's not vaccinated. Uh, that then brings us all the way back to where we were. Don't forget, we had thought that we were through with this until Delta came along. So I don't want to take my chances with the next variant. So please just do the thing that we need to do to protect ourselves in this pandemic. We don't want to be the reason why someone we love gets, gets sick, uh, potentially dies, or the reason why we're left uh, worrying about some long-term uh, complications of a disease we could have prevented in the first place. That's right. That's right. Dr. Abdul El Sayed uh, and Brother Reverend, Anthony Galloway, thank you so much both for joining us to have this very important conversation. Dr. Uh, Syed, you, you have a book and a podcast that I want the people to know about. The podcast is America Dissected, uh, and your book is Medicare for All, A Citizen's Guide with Dr. Micah Johnson. Um, thank you both so much for joining us this morning. Appreciate you. When we come back, like it or not, but until such time, DJ Exclusive, take it away. That might help. I sneezed over the break, so I had to mute myself. Good morning again, everybody. Shout out to everyone that joined us this morning. Anthony, Dr. El Saeed, we greatly appreciate y'all. And thank y'all again so much for joining us this morning. And man, that was some great, great information. If you haven't got your vaccine yet, do your research. Go get your vaccine. Go get your vaccine. Because this, this, this thing ain't going nowhere real. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. So go ahead and get vaccinated if you can. And uh, we'll be good to go, man. Good morning, everybody. Shout out to the church lady, man. I'm not sure if y'all been reading the chat. The church lady, uh, she don't mind me sharing, sharing that half her church has died from COVID. And they were all older people and people that she looked up to. So, hey, we're sending prayers and uh, blessings to you, church lady, all right? <clears throat> Blue Daddy, good morning, Sarah AP. <laughs> Sarah AP, you thought I was off today? <laughs> Bitch, you don't give me no days off, girl. <laughs> Say good morning to you. Infinite content, what's going on? Roadrunner, there you go. Don't wrap yourself. Jill Potts, good morning. Yep, Roll the Dragon, but did you see the reason why, though? It, there's a reason. Shout out Tiger, happy birthday again, Tiger. Tiger said his cash app is dollar sign T Katsune. T K A E M D K A T S U N E. Happy birthday, uh, Tiger again. Sylvia Jones, happy Friday to you too. Thank you. Valley, of course you can, man. Hey, keep up the faith. We got you. The universe will provide, okay? Make sure that you keep your head up, man. Less stress. Don't let these people stress you out of your, your job and your life, anything. No, you shouldn't have to be stressed out at all. Being stressed me out every day, but y'all see I still show up and just don't pay them no attention most of the time. <laughs> I'm going to leave Ben alone for being fired me, okay? <laughs> I miss that sexy smile Looking for to see you I hope I will lose control Sophia Williams, we got you, Sophia. Good morning, Miss Sophia, as well. To Demon, your mama, good morning.
and, and roll the dragon. Let me tell y'all something. If we bless somebody, we ask for prayers for somebody, and it might not be legit or it might be fake. Hey, it's all good. You know why? Because karma is a bi. Need I say more? So if she is a fake person, if it is not someone real, that's not us for us to decide. Because karma. There it is, right there. Golden State, good morning. Living's Valley, love you too, brother. Thank you so much. The Dragon, good morning. Iris Jones, good morning, y'all. It's y'all please send a prayer off of Miss Sophia Williams' grandmother as well, too, all right? Sylvia Jones, good morning. Brenda Johnson, I see you. Good morning. Hey, man, I don't believe in nothing but positive vibes over here, bro. Straight up. <laughs> Laura Estrada You thought I missed you Good morning, Laura Lisa Noel I know you somewhere in there, too Lily, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Oh, Savage Sweetheart, you know I have. They didn't let damn Ultron get the damn Infinity Stones. And he didn't broke the third, fourth, and fifth wall. <laughs> Infinite Content said, so I had a guy come into my RX yesterday. And he was on the phone talking loud about his son possibly being positive for Rona. No had no mask on. Man, I hate to hear that infinite content. Man, just make sure that you're good, okay? Just make sure that you're good. And, 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 and I ain't going to go off. I'm not going to go off on the tangent. But real quick, what we're going to do is read off our new patrons real quick. We got Trina P, Thompson L, and Juanita RB. Thank you so much for being new Patreons. And we have Dolores M, our new Twitch subscribers. We have Tom Baddest Tolis. I know I messed that all up. <laughs> I had a bit moment. Lost who resubscribe. We have Butternut Squash who resubscribe. <laughs> Brick throwing commie 1312 resubscribe. Donut Space resubscribe. Semi Lynn the Car Dragon gifted a subscription to Anna Casparian. Mimosa Dragon gifted a subscription to Yarana Gate. Yarn Gate gifted a subscription to Danielle Labiqua. Moon Meat gifted one community subscription. Jam Tomb gifted one community subscription. And Sis Cat cheered 10 bits. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm laughing at My those mic came Twitch out. <laughs> Bro, I'm laughing at those Twitch names because I'm thinking of a time when I was a teacher. I, I think I'm well equipped to do Twitch names because of some of the names I had to pronounce as a as a teacher, like A A Rod, you know? A A Rod. <laughs> Bro, I don't know. Doing these damn names is like damn. Tom the bad to the toilet. No? Okay. <laughs> Law C O C O C X suck. Oh, Law Sue. Okay, cool. Gotcha. Danielle Labiqua. Labiqua? 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 Labiqua. Okay, Labiqua. Le Bruh, the Labiqua. The Labiqua was the one that made me come on the screen because I sound I like one of my students in Jacksonville. <laughs> but I digress. James, continue. Oh, oh, oh. I'm going back to listen to some music to your hands, bro. <laughs> Hey man, okay. Make sure that if you have not already, if you have not already, patreon.com slash like it or not, patreon.com slash like it or not, or patreon.com slash the BPD show. Get infinite, get infinite content. <laughs> get access to exclusive content and all that good stuff, man. And make sure next week, patron party is going down. 80s, 90s party. Ben, I hope you heard me. Rebecca, I hope you heard me. David, I hope you heard me. 80s, 90s themed party for the patient party next week. All our ass got to dress up, so make sure that you're ready, y'all. Y'all stay tuned. Like the night is coming up soon.
slide to the right. Come on, come on, come on. Slide to the left, slide to the right. Watch what I mean, we can do the side. David, it's real easy. Just put on a white t-shirt and some blue jeans. <laughs> and your can't go ahead. My hand is wrapped around your waist. I love the way that you be twinning to the face. Moving sideways on a Friday. DJ playing all of your favorites. I'm the lady. Favorite. What? Are you asking if I'm going to play what again? You mean this song? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I don't know what time it is. Get your coffee, your tea, your drink, whatever it is you need. It's time for Like It or Not, y'all. Like it or not, it's going down. Like it or not, it's starting now. Oh, like it or not, it's going down. Like it or not, I can't stand Y'all stick around Oh, Rebecca Azor Is coming out You know she got a Story for us Seven sweetheart, you haven't heard the song Benjamin Is coming through That's my all through and through Oh, I am your DJ DJ exclusive Y'all know who I am I stay in the chat Do I need to rewind it back to Wayne a little bit? Like it or not It's going down Alright, I'm going to play version 2 then <laughs> like it or not, it's about to go down. <laughs> yeah. Just to make sure that y'all didn't miss it the first time, I could play it again. This is probably going to be the last day I play this now. It has a recording of Dwayne the Big Like it or not, y'all. Like it or not, it's going down. And a lot of people have text me that they wake up in the morning singing this song. Like, y'all really sing this? I make me feel good. I appreciate it. Y'all just wait till Rebecca get on this thing. Oh, my. Oh, Rebecca Azor is coming she got a story for us. Oh, Benjamin is coming through. That's my doll. All through. I say that sound like a sick ass Luther Vandross. I am your DJ. DJ exclusive. Y'all know who I am. I stay in the town. <laughs> Let's see what's going on, brother. Like it or not, it's going down. Like it or not, it's about to go down. Like it or not, with Benjamin Dixon starts now. Good morning, good morning, good morning. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Like It or Not, where we're free to tell the truth. And not care who doesn't like it. It is Friday. It is October 1st, 2021. We are joined on the screen by none other than the candidate for mayor in the city of Buffalo, New York. Uh, the Democratic nominee, the victor of the Democratic primary, none other than, than India Walton. Sister Walton, thank you so much for joining us. How are you this morning? Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm very excited. I'm a fan. Um, so thanks for having me. 
the oh party. yes look because we are uh, i need people to understand um that this account this youtube account this this <laughs> this uh, tv show this you know this particular um like it or not show is a um stan uh account <laughs> for <laughs> india walter so i just need yeah. people to know <laughs> yes because because i'm gonna be honest with you sister walton like since the second i heard about your race and i listened to your voice and to what you stand for and what you fight for um i've been a fan um but then when i heard what was happening to you in your race i sunk my teeth into this thing because uh it is an absurdity so before we unpack all of that could you tell the people about yourself and your race and what you're fighting for for the people of buffalo Sure. Um, I'm India Walton. Um, I was born and raised in Buffalo. My professional background is actually as a registered nurse, but I've been an organizer, activist. I led a lot of the BLM protests last summer, and I'm a former nonprofit executive. I was just really disappointed with the response of our current mayor after the uprisings last summer after the murder of George Floyd. And I decided Mm -hmm. that I was going to run for mayor um, and turn that protest power into political power. And we successfully um, unseated a 16 year four term incumbent who was heavily entrenched despite not having establishment support. So I'm proud of the work that we've done. And rather than him concede, um, and kind of show me the ropes. He's doubled down. He's um, waged a writing campaign that's being powered by the GOP and, and far right. Like they're known white supremacists who are his supporters. Uh, this is a black man, by the way. Um, mm-hmm. The attacks mm-hmm. and smears and uh, threats of violence are, are coming my way, but we're holding strong. And I think that we're going to finish um, with a win on, on November 2nd in the general election. Mm. Mm. I want to. Um... I want to let the people see um, the current mayor, um, who is the outgoing mayor, Byron Brown, who you've told is a black man who has, uh, Mm. we're going to go with G1. This first clip is of him announcing this write-in campaign and denouncing you, a black woman, as nothing more than a socialist. Let's take a look at this black man. We are going on to the general election as a candidate for mayor, and what people have been saying is write down Byron Brown. You know, we know the difference between socialism and democracy. We are going to fight for democracy in the city of Buffalo. The voters have said that they don't want an unqualified, inexperienced, radical socialist trying to learn on the job, on the backs of the residents of this community. We will not let it happen. I am a democratic Mm. socialist. The first word in that is democrat. Uh, And there you are at the end. Sister Walton, just please expound on Byron Brown. Um, he's a he's a corporate Democrat. Um, he's this is a man who's been in some sort of political office for the last three decades. He's a career politician who really caters to the developer class and um, the the wealthy parts of Buffalo, which is not the majority of us. Uh, Buffalo is the third poorest city of its size in the nation. We have a childhood poverty rate that's above 50 percent. And what I stand for is working class people, um, folks who come from neighborhoods like I grew up in that need help, um, that that need assistance, you know, closing this racial wealth and home ownership gap, who need access to quality jobs <laughs> and education and health care. And, and to me, that is what being a democratic socialist means and it's unfortunate that people believe that there are some folks who don't deserve decent food clean air and and water so you know game on and i think that your theme song is very appropriate to this campaign like it or not um i'm here and the (laughs) fact of the matter is i'm going to win november 2nd and we're going to begin prioritizing (laughs) those that have been left behind for so long yes Shout out yeah. India Walton. I greatly appreciate you for that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I feel that. So, so, so I just want to add in that, um, you know, Mayor Brown, the clown, I'm just kidding. Mayor Brown, um, he, you know, 
for him to have that position and hold that position for a long time, making history in his moment, right? Um, you know, you would think he would pass the baton, right? This is that crabs in the barrel type thing. And it, is he upset mm. that you're a woman? He said that he doesn't want someone who's unqualified. And uh, last week I spoke about, you know, who makes those rules of being qualified or unqualified? He is just upset because in that moment, while he was having that, you know, while he had that position, you actually experienced, you were somebody who can talk about life's real experiences. He's afraid of that because right now that's what the people want to hear. That's what the people want to yeah. see. You've lived life. You've walked in a lot of people's shoes. People can understand your language. People speak that language. People can move in that direction. And they know that with someone like you in office, having that seat, making history as the first black woman, but having that seat, it's going to be where you actually are for the people. And I believe that's what Mike Brown is scared or Mayor Brown, whatever. I don't know. Mayor Brown is afraid of, but he's, he's had that position. And what, 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 what really worries me is that he wouldn't look at you and mm. say, you know, change. This is change. This is history. We're doing something right in Buffalo. That would also be if he wants credit or if he wants that, you know, that would be something for him. Remove yourself, sir. Remove yourself and allow you to get in there. My question to you is, um, you know, when you say that, you know, you are a registered nurse and things like that, what what brought you, what um, pushed you to take on now becoming someone who is political and, and wanting the seat? Mm hmm. So um, I became a nurse largely because I have 19 year old twins. They were born extremely premature and I was dissatisfied sometimes with the way we were treated in the hospital. And when I went wow. to one of the other nurses um, and I told her, she said, if you don't like it, you should go be a nurse. Uh, so that's what I did. And, mm. you know, at, at every stage of my life where I saw something wasn't right, I wanted to do something about it. So in my interactions with patients, eventually students as a school nurse, I'm like, being a nurse is great, but these one-to-one -one interactions is not going to get the job done. So I wanted to work on policy and have a broader impact on my community. And that led me into organizing in the nonprofit world. What a lot of people don't know is that I'm a, I'm a policy dork, right? So when we talk about an experience, my experience has been that I have been a part of coalitions, advocacy groups, and as a nonprofit executive myself, taking smart policy to City Hall and having the door shut in my face. That's a part of the reason why I decided to run was because I know that if we just have the cooperation of our city government, we can get so much more done. I've sat in rooms with the mayor. In fact, in 2015, we were at a political function together, and I said, why aren't there any women in elected office in Buffalo? And he said, if you don't mm. like it, you should run. So, mm. you know, mm. here, here we are. Um, and the reason why I'm able to articulate policy so well is because these are things that I'm, I actually believe, that I know for myself, that I've researched, that I've read about, I've written policy. And... I'm not just parroting someone else's prepared talking points, right? This is... Mm. Uh, this is 39 years of lived experience. I'm a highly intelligent person. I'm sharp. I'm smart. I'm ready to go. And I know what I don't know. And I don't expect that I'm going to have all the answers. But what I will do is go and find the people who are the experts who have the answers to help me get the job done. Hello. And they See, got the nerve to say that she's not qualified. Okay. This, <laughs> so but they can but she's not qualified in the sense where they just look at her and think that she's, um, uh, you know, just another person, you know, uh, you know, who's just getting all this stuff from the internet, you know, fighting for black lives in the streets. That's not qualified to these people that have been holding these seats. You know, these people mm. that have been holding these seats and, you know, never letting nobody in, mm. not really any change happening. Um, but not, not India, not India. A few of the policies that I love that you, you, you're running off of are public safety, housing, immigration, pandemic recovery, the arts, climate, economic growth, education, public housing, food access, infrastructure. Uh, you said something um, online and you were like, these are the policies that they're scared of, they're afraid of. You know, and they're afraid of this because it will it may actually do something. It may actually push forth some change. And they're afraid because it's coming from somebody who has experienced a lot of these things. And they're like, no, we can't have somebody relatable in, in this seat. We need to have somebody who's able to ride both ways, both the mm. right and the left. Mm. Right. That that bipartisan idea. But we have yep. to have somebody in the seat. And <laughs> it takes a black woman. And we have to have somebody in the seat that is going to I literally say, hey, no to the right, no to the left, but here is what the people want.
This it's not specific to anything but change, and this is where we have to go. Well, you know me, I'm so. gonna be pushing for the left, but that's just me, uh, Sister Walton. <laughs> I want to play this clip from y'all debate, um, where you really laid it made made it clear. This is the part that I want everyone to just let this resonate in your soul. You won the Democratic primary, which means Byron Brown lost. And so by right, he should not have even been on the stage with you at the debate. He said, right, man, that he is a Hmm. sore loser who wants to be written in. Exactly. Sister Zora, run this clip from the debate so the people can see how Sister Walton read, read this man for filth real quick. When I knock on doors, you know what people tell me? They don't know any of these people who are up on this stage with me. They don't know anything that they have done. I mean, you've been married for 16 years. I would expect that everyone would know who you are. But the fact of the matter is that I won the Democratic primary. I'm not even sure why I'm standing up here with the three of you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Walton. People are calling me. I haven't even won yet, but people see me on TV and they said she must be someone who can help me. Someone called my campaign phone at 1030 at night a couple of nights ago. There's a dilapidated house across the street from her. It's infested with rodents. She's called the city. She's called 311. She's called the Department of Health and no one will help her. She doesn't even know where to start. My God, today, sister. Yes, sister indeed. Please, today, yes. tomorrow, and forevermore. Look, read him like a book, <laughs> sweetie. It's encyclopedia. She said you shouldn't it's even. Found. I don't even know why you're standing up here with me. Why are oh. you here? And she why looked you, at you. Don't him. even go to this school. Why are you here? You don't even go Brown? here. Right. <laughs> Give me six feet, sir. Like what is happening? Social right distance now? from this campaign, <laughs> man. <laughs> sister Walton, please just continue the evisceration of this man. <laughs> you know, I I am one of six children. Um, I am third in the birth order. I'm five feet tall. I have four brothers. And before I went on that debate stage, my little brother called me and he said, I don't know why this man will ever even try it with you. And he like, just do what you do, sis. You you got this. And when I, you know, I, I practiced and I, I rehearsed my answers. I listened to it on a loop in my headphones. And when I got in the room and I listened to their openings, I took my notes and flipped them over. And I said, mm. you know, game game on. All I have to do is be myself. The people want to listen yes. to the truth. And this is one more debate than he acknowledged or even gave me in the primary. He wouldn't he didn't want to engage in dialogue or discourse when it was his turn. And um during during that time he didn't he still didn't want to talk policy he didn't want to talk policy he didn't want to talk issues you know he was he was on the attack and clowning around so you know i just i I let him have it and i will continue to do so because it's unacceptable that he feels like his style of leadership is what the people are asking for they voted already in june they're going to vote again in november and yeah you know thank you for your service but you're no longer (laughs) here Thank you for your services. <laughs> Thank you for your services. Sorry to that man. <laughs> Sorry to Sorry that man. To that man. <laughs> Rebecca. <laughs> we are so ready. No, we're so ready. The, 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 I think, um, and I said this when, because, you know, when we was just rooting for you, because, you know, we, we was rooting for you. Okay, India, we was back yeah. here like, hey, like, India, you know, call our phone. <laughs> <laughs> India for Buffalo. <laughs> That's what we were doing over here. Um, but in that time, just to see um, a lot of, uh, uh, just to see you breaking um the ceiling, right? Mm. Uh, and, and, and fighting mm. your way in. Um, I hate that you do. It has to be that way. But in this particular moment, like you are, um, you're breaking ground, right? Yeah. And I think that uh, uh, they're afraid of what's going to be new in that area. Never, when people think of Buffalo, we're not going to think of it being led by a black woman. And mm. um, we're, we're, this is, we're talking history. And uh, when we change history here, um, or when we add to it, and when it, when the person that we're adding to it is black it makes america shifty you know it makes america uncomfortable Mm. and it makes the people that are usually in power which are usually white males or males
males in that position, um, it, it makes them, you know, look at it and say, no, we need to gain control. But in this time, your fight has been something beautiful. I hate that you got to fight this way, but you yeah. ain't never, you ain't mm-hmm. never, you have, ain't ne- never you have, I have yet to see you be like, I'm just going to sit down and I'm just going to let them take this. You are like, no, I'm going to fight until, until the end, baby. And I will win. Right and I, I pray that for you. I hope <laughs> that you right. do. I believe that because with all of that in you, ain't no way. Buffalo deserves this. That's Buffalo right. deserves this. They chose and they chose you. Yeah. That's that's the thing. Like they they the 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 primary you won and you have had to go through a series of court cases. As Byron mm-hmm. Brown has inserted himself back as a sore loser, it's what I consider to be his own version of Donald Trump's big lie, not being able to take his loss. Tell us about where you all stand now in terms of all the different court cases and the decisions. Is this guy actually going to be on the ballot and how do we get victory? Because this pe- the people have already spoken. Mm-hmm. So... Um He was actually placed back on the ballot by a federal judge who was actually who was a a Trump appointee and the brother of one of um, the incumbent's largest donors. Right. Um, But after a very extensive court battle, uh, the the court of appeals overturned that decision. So he is not on the ballot. But, you know. He has an independent expenditure that's Republican backed. Millionaires are pouring lots of money into this race locally. In fact, not only are they saying write down Byron Brown, but like the word has that they've ordered stamps so people can go and stamp his name um, on the ballot. So, Uh you know, Uh that coupled with concerted smear and fear campaigns, lots of Mm -hmm. media being being pushed against us. You know, the, the way we get to victory is boots on the ground um text and phone banks but we, like we need help with the with the finances too i don't take money from lobbyists corporate developers or or big companies we raise our money individual small donations um mm-hmm. one one supporter at a time folks can feel free to visit our website at www.indiawalton.com if they want to sign up to volunteer i don't care where you are in the country you can get on the phone and make phone calls or you can Send send your um, financial support five ten dollars five hundred dollars you know um, we can we can use all the help that we can get in this moment but we're gonna keep on pushing keep working hard each and every day and I think that um, ultimately justice will prevail and we'll be victorious come November second victorious good word victorious. I believe that. Look, we're we're two or more gathered. Okay, huh? it's, mm. it's, it will come. It, it's gonna come to fruition. <laughs> yes, reach out, Bubba. Reach out. We can touch and agree on that. Touch Amen. Out. <laughs> Extend your hands to the camera all over the internet, all over Bob. Anyway, I don't know who I was about to say his internet. It was Andy. I want to play one last thing for you. It's it's Friday. We just we don't even care, especially when we have the righteous the the right to clown somebody like Byron Brown. But let's let's pivot from him for a second because one of the things that he's doing and you mentioned is the fear mongering and the scare mongering, the the red baiting, uh, particularly as it pertains to socialism. Um, this is a clip, um, and you were at the uh, New York City DSA. Democratic Socialists of America annual convention, and you're talking about quote unquote socialism and how it's betrayed as something that should be scary to black people. Uh, and I think that you handled it brilliantly. Let's take a look at that clip. Socialism is scary to black people. It is, especially those older. They want what we they want what we want, but the word has been taken away from us. I've had people in my own community tell me that. Me being a member of the DSA was pushing the white boy's agenda. We have to work actively to undo that and bring people in because this affects us. This affects us. This is our agenda. And I'm so independent that I wouldn't be pushing an agenda if I didn't feel like it belonged to me. Again, I thank you. Keep up the fight. I am yours in the struggle. We've seen it. We're watching it before our very eyes. We're going to have a socialist mayor. When we organize, we win. Solidarity forever. I love you. Uh, and I think now we're going to take questions. 
solidarity forever. Uh, Sister Walton, we know your time is pressed and you have to get out of here, but I want you to get the last word and see if you could just put a bow, a ribbon around all of this as it pertains to your, uh, your life. You know, Rebecca pointed that out, like you, you actually are out here uh, ministering from a depth of experience, um, but also mm. your fight for justice and your fight for democratic socialism. Yep. Get the last word and then tell the people how they can con- connect with you. Um, I, I always wrap up everything that I say by saying that this for me is a radical act of love. I love my community. I love people. I am a caregiver, a mother, and a nurse, and I will never stop fighting for what is right, even if that means that I have to sacrifice my time and talents. I'm I'm always going to show up. I was up at 6 a.m. on the picket line with nurses that are going on strike because their employer is not negotiating their contract in good faith. And that doesn't have anything to do with politics. It has to do with people and prioritizing people first over profits or anything else. So um, I just want to say I I love you. Thank you for having me on. And again, if folks want to support, get involved in any way, learn more, visit our website at www indiawalton.com follow us on all socials our socials are are popping these days and um if you like any of those <laughs> snappy lines uh give us give hey. us a follow and a like hey. yes i like yeah. that hey. i love <laughs> that Big thank you popping. so much india <laughs> look yo i i we're gonna be writing for you um we're rooting for um well over here we love black women okay and black women who are, are, are pushing for change so we'll be rooting for you and and when that time comes, we yes. want you back on the show so that we yes, can celebrate absolutely. it properly. Okay, a whole party. When it's time to party, I just know y'all coming to Buffalo. Book them, book oh, them man, what? Hey, oh, listen, thank listen, you for the invite. We will, the hey, we will be we gonna, there. We will be there. We gonna pull up. Matter of fact, we gonna pull up like this, James. Take us to a quick break and and let's see the lady, the first lady of Buffalo, the soon to be mayor of Buffalo, India Walton, out of the club. Thank you so much for hanging out with us this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Be- hey. Look, they, they can never keep me down. I'm going and if I ever yeah, feel the snow, I go again. I never quit. Man, I can't be a walker. I'm ready over here. I bet when I land, they gon' tell me it's luck again. See that I'm winning, it's harder to watch. I'm setting the stage, you should give me my prize. You ain't got a soul, you lacking the spirit. You talk about your neck, I'ma show you I'm with it. I'm really happy you to sit and watch me win again and win again and win again. I'm gonna get no more than a chance to have you back home. I celebrate you, sister. Oh, yeah. Please don't play no games with me. It was never about the fame to me. It needed the best, so they came to me. Who the best in this thing? Tell them, yeah, that's me. Tell them, who bring the fire? Say, yeah, that's me. Who make it flip? Y'all make sure y'all say too. We got more like it than that. Coming up, man. Party feel alive. Tell them, yeah, that's me. My girl's so proud. They get boy when they ask. Is that your man? Yeah, that's me. And if I'm taking a shot, I don't miss. Who knew I would be at the top like this? And no one made my goals for me. But I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Because it's the path that God chose for me. So even if some doors close for me, I still won't let y'all close to me. So please step back where you're supposed to be. Put the game all on hold for me. It's in bad, watch me supposed to be. Uh, it's in my jeans, I'm better than I'm in. I know my flow's too sick, I got the medicine. I'm way at the top, who can take my place? I went too hard, can't feel my face. Who the best in this thing? Tell them, yeah, that's me. Tell them, who bring the fire? Say, yeah, that's me. Who make it flip, make it bang. That's me. Who that chillin' at the top? Tell them, yeah, that's me. Yeah, yeah. Tell them, yeah, that's me. Yeah, I'm chillin' at the top. Ooh, yeah, that's me. Talking right, to my mirror sure like stay I love you so much Oh, wait a minute you Curving all my you critics like I heard you, so what? You can't kill my confidence, I think I'm the man Tally all the f*** I ever gave on my head Lately I've been living like I can't take a loss They ain't wanna help me, that's what made me a boss You can't kill my confidence, I think I'm the this man is, We don't this give a f- old. what they don't <laughs> understand like season, I broke records while I'm sleeping. I'm coming now. I forgot really to tell y'all. Yeah, I mean, I did tell y'all. I hate my job. <sighs> all I do is crush cans all day. It's just so depressing. Percussion, the disgusting. I hear them 
talking about that they did, then they do not move me, not in the least. They ain't been dropping no seeds in the soil, but swear that you all must spot in the feast. I've been on go, y'all yeah, missed all of that. Show, I knew y'all did. Bro, bro, wave ride, cool shot it too, naughty pool party, wet for the face ride. Any up, penny down, hand me down, thrift store, old drip. New money, too funny, old show, he talking about old. All right, y'all, y'all welcome they back to the now. stream. Ben and Rebecca. Cash cow, keeping it brash now. Hey, 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 real quick. Hey, I heard that you should always look into a mirror before making a big decision. Why is that? It helps you reflect. Mm. <laughs> it was giving a candy man moment for a second. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> Candy did you man, see that, candy by the way? Man, candy man. I did. Don't you do I, that. I, I, yeah. Don't you do that, man. Don't you do that. What? What? Candy man? Man, I'm the dude that jumps in the mirror and be like, <laughs> bloody Mary, bloody Mary, bloody Mary. And be like, uh, 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 uh. Because, <laughs> okay, can, we don't do that. We don't call on We don't do that. Now, Candy Man, Candy Man, <laughs> Candyman, um, I did watch it. I told you guys I went and watched it, and because I didn't watch the previous like one, like I watched it, but so long ago, and I don't remember it because I didn't. Re- first. I didn't watch the previous yeah. one where I could really understand like whatever. So when I went to watch that one, um, it was cool. There was a lot of things that they um, touched on and stuff, but I went with somebody who was just so. Ugh, like wasn't a- like wasn't able to really see the artisticness in the movie. Ah. Um, and so um. I was like. Uh, I, I gotta go watch it again. Maybe not because yeah. I don't really watch no, all of that. Um, there's only one movie that actually. The, yeah. Yeah, so I, I don't. I don't imagine the second Candyman is going to scare me. M- most movies don't scare me. I, uh, but except for one, did y'all see Drag Me to Hell? No, sounds about like okay. a, one of those. Um, I saw it. White, <laughs> white productions. Listen, listen. Let me tell you something. Who's the I Who's was, the Who's the main character? Is it like I can't, I can't even remember the characters. All I know yeah. is I was in the theater. I was in the theater, jumping out of my seat, looking for my little, you know, the little small Bibles, the little green Bibles you carry around. When you, you stupid. <laughs> man, that, that movie had me so shook. Now uh, I will nah. say that's one of those movies that's just like it ranks up there, probably almost up there with uh. Nightmare on Elm Street because the first yeah. Nightmare on Elm Street, those two movies scared the crap out of me. But yeah, Drag Me to Hell is one of those movies you'll be like, "Yo, I don't, I don't know about this for sure." Hey man, listen, I went to church. <laughs> I, I put on Kirk Franklin after I got home. I could not go to sleep. I was like, something <laughs> about the name Jesus." Yeah, I don't watch scary movies like that because I, it just I feel like I'm inviting. Sp- I feel like I'm inviting spirits into my home if I'm watching them in my home. I don't sleep. I'm scared. I'm not scared anymore, but. Still kind of, but I'm, um, you know, I'm not, I don't like the dark. So, um, I love you know, uh, I, I can't watch any of that stuff. Cause I feel like I can, it could be clothes on like the chair on the side. I'm like, <laughs> sitting right there. It could be a little sound. That's why I, you know, I'm, I'm grateful. I have an alarm system in my home. I, the moon shines through my window every single night. So everything is lit. Okay. in here, like, I, I play either like love songs or like, um, you know, um, sermons or gospel music (laughs) at night just so that the, I don't hear the silence and things like that. Like that's what I'll do. And, um, but there was the the most scariest movie that I've ever seen was when I was in um, college. And I told you guys about this one and I got the title wrong, but it was, it wasn't the sixth sense because you guys got me together about that. It was called something else similar to that. And these people, this woman was a uh, like, and this is based off th- y'all. This is what got me. Who told me to go to the people's movies and go watch something based off true events that had real footage in there? Well, what's the, that you was, you what's must the be talking about uh, not Annabelle, but it's it's like the other one that's like uh, it's, it's like, like Annabelle, is like the sequel. No, no, no. This one was at, they, they couldn't they could not understand what was going on in this small country. The Conjuring. Like it was no. Conjuring. It was, was the it lady was a therapist. M. Night, M. Night Shyamalan movie. The lady <laughs> right, was a therapist. The, <laughs> the lady was a therapist, y'all, and she had a daughter. The daughter went missing. Yeah, yeah. The daughter went missing. The yeah. husband had um, committed suicide. Then there was this this whole thing of suicides, and there was this creature thing so there were police into her home she never what was arrested for them for her daughter being missing they had right. um the police came to her home y'all the police came to her home and there was um this there you know they have cameras in their cars at the time and the police came to her home like to watch over it y'all why did the thing whatever it is on the people's camera actual footage eat up the police or not eat up murder the police what? officer 
What yes, movie is this? There was like he a video. Was in the fourth there kind. was on video like is an exorcism it? or something. And the she, fourth, what is the it fourth, called? The fourth kind. The fourth kind. Yeah. Is that it? Hang yes. I've never, I've never seen it. I've never seen it. Hang on. Now Let's see if now I can actually get scared. You said it's at, based off real events, though, man. I don't yeah, know if I can it's watch based that. Based off of real events, that little okay, girl so still missing. They never found it. her. I got it. It's the fourth kind. It was made in two thousand nine. A thriller involving an ongoing unsolved mystery in Alaska, where one town has seen an extraordinary number of unexplained disappearances during the past forty years, and there are accusations of a federal cover up. Is that the right one? That's the one. And you guys, oh, I watched it, and I could like me thinking about it right now. I feel like. Like, I'm going to have to call somebody over to come sleep with me because I don't, I can't, like, just thinking about it. Oh, <laughs> just thinking they did about say it. it's aliens. Okay. But, so, yeah. so you said, you said that movie was based on a true story. I have a, this might be a little out there, but I think all movies are based on true mm. events in a way. They are. Like, there's stuff that they've been hiding for, from on. us for so many years. Warning, flag mm-hmm. on the play. Do not go in this area with Benjamin Dixon. Y'all know I'm on some other astral plane stuff. So let's let's bring it back to politics. Oh, Dwayne, but I mean, this is the agree. truth, though. Every movie is based on some kind of piece of fact. I always believe that. Mm, every well, movie. Well, I think. I mean, I, I think agree all, too. All stories are. I'm be honest with you. If you look at it, a lot of stories are the same. It's just just different different aspects of it. But yeah, no, I I look at these movies and I see aspects of it in our real life. Because really, think about it. What could be more absurd than real life? Because think hmm. about the movie. What, what's the movie with Mark Wal- Wahlberg where they all uh, it was Night Shyamalan and they had all started killing themselves and, and they suspended with their uh, what the happening. Remember the happening. The happening. Yeah, you can't mm-hmm. tell me we're not living through the happening. All these fools running into the pandemic, like infect me, infect me, moron. No, it's just like nature's gonna reboot itself. I, I already think that nature gonna reboot this planet because climate, uh, <laughs> climate, climate change, change. Is, is real thing. The planet is gonna get tired and start taking us out one by one. <laughs> I don't know. I'm covered by the Lord. I still got some time. Hallelujah. Planet. <laughs> I'm covered. I, I see the, the the experience from the universe, so I'm good to go. You know. <laughs> I still got some time on this planet. I don't know. Like I know that you know we play around and be like, "Come get me, aliens! <laughs> it's ghetto over here." But then now, like, imagine face to face the alien and be like, "Oh God, take me down! I can't do this! I can't do this!" Lord, what damn that! Y'all can still okay. come get me, child. Cause <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> which 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 character are you? Are you are you the people from Independence Day that go on top of the roof and say, "Take me to your leader"? Or are you the people who like try to like do like Rebecca James, like who gonna run as soon as they see the alien? Which one I didn't say I'm gonna run. I said, oh, imagine fate being face to face with them. They don't. They have the power to stop you from running or whatever them things is. Now, <laughs> exactly. another conversation. Like, what's, what's the point <laughs> of running the away from it? Because they are gonna trap me any goddamn way. <laughs> They gonna beam me up, Scotty. Okay, I don't, I don't okay. really like. I don't have time. Oh mm-hmm. man, wibbly wobbly <laughs> time you want. My God, today. Oh, uh, another movie, uh, Rebecca, that you need to watch is Hereditary. You it's probably time. won't watch it. Hereditary. Yeah, I don't do. I really don't do scary movies. Ooh, I don't do scary movies at, at now, all. Yeah. Now Maybe that I just one really seen like scary movies. shook me. Yeah, oh, this Hereditary. Is, this is pretty new. Uh, yeah, it's mm. 2018. Okay, I'm gonna put that. I'm gonna watch. Yeah. I'm gonna watch the fourth kind and Hereditary tonight. And uh, yeah, and if I, if y'all see me doing a live stream at two o'clock in the morning, you know what happened. Oh, you know well, what? Ben, ben, also, you gonna really have to summer. do holy water with the with that movie. I, it's Which, very intense. The fourth kind. Okay. Like I didn't sleep for like a month. It's very okay. intense. I'm gonna go into my little my little room where I meditate, and it's dark. It's real small, and it could be really, 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 really scary. Mm. If I let it. And I'm that's because you get to sleep next to Jada every night, and you got you Hello. know three little kids <laughs> that be coming through. You know, you got. Uh, I, I do I, live I, on. Like, uh, I do live on door. Sesame Street. I do Who is that Sesame around the corner? Who is that tapping on my window? Who is that in the back? That's gonna be me. Like every little thing. Who turned on the lights and it ain't even no lights? Wait, like, wait, just... wait, wait, wait. No, I don't think you understand. Like the kids' toys have a life of their own somewhere around two o'clock in the morning. Stuff that just be turning what? on and like toys just be talking. All of a sudden, a doll will start talking or a car. Just, just trust me. It might be easier when you have kids, but the, all their toys add to the little mystery of the darkness that you're talking about, Rebecca. Uh, <laughs> no, but- my Alexa, as you can, as you guys can see, it's unplugged right now. My Alexa, I woke up in the middle of the night, you know, had to go pee, whatever. So I woke up in the middle of the night. I hope, like, you know, I'm just sitting there. I said, what is that light in my kitchen? 
It's just going and going, going and going. You know, Yellow not light. like it was. Th- just keep, it's keep, it just keeps on going. I'm like, in the name of Jesus, what's <laughs> going on? Fans is recording me. What's happening Girl. right now? So, so I watched it to see. I watched it to see if it would stop. It kept on going. Like I know it'll do that when it like um, if the lights go out for a second or if, and then it'll come back, right? Mm. But I just kept looking at it. That thing, it was not stopping. Like, what hey. you picking up? That, that I means you had a. What you picking up? I got some. So, you had a notification, breakage. sister. <laughs> That's what that no, 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 notification. Notification is green. The, it, it'll light up green for a notification. This was it, the ring was blue and it kept, continuously kept going. Oh, as like if, it's trying yes. to get the is, I is said, your, oh no, I don't Alexa know what you're trying to pick in? up. Is I had to plugged? unplug her when I saw that and I, w- I went to go lay down. Uh, Yo, Alexa possessed uh, with Martika. Uh, <laughs> Mm-mm. Martika. Martika. I don't know what that is. Hey, what was the name know. of that Twitch subscriber? La, Be- La Bequita. What was it? It was uh... Danielle Labiqua. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Danielle Labiqua Look, yes, on Twitch. John, that's Twitch. what got me getting so religious today. It was a lot Antifa after last and I said, uh-uh. Yeah, I got to cast the. Oh my bad! In the middle of the night, uh, Rebecca's Alexa was playing this. <laughs> that would have been scary. Oh, that would have been really scary. For that would have been scary. Yeah. As hell. <laughs> that would have been scary. You know, you can drop in with your Alexa device. Like you can be yeah, out, and then you phone can phone like phone. drop in to hear your house. I, I don't never do, do that because I'm like, who wants to hear what the hell is going on in my house when when I'm not here? When I'm, I'm not, not there. To hear that. I am not Mm-mm. trying to hear that. I ain't trying to hear I, none of that. I got the Alexa show in the kitchen, and every now and then, like when I'm gone, I'll try to do it to see what the dog is doing. But it's on the counter, so I can't really see him. So now I just do it to mess with my mom. I just drop in <laughs> at her house. I'm like, hey, mama, mama, what you doing? She's like, boy, if you, don't so stop, if you don't stop that one day, you going to uh, drop in and see something you don't want to see. I'm like, no, nah, nah, we got to turn that off. We got to turn that off now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now you maybe think now, now, now we got to make sure all of our mamas, none of the mamas could get these Alexas here. Now. We can't because Mama Gwen, Gwen, Mama Rose. Gwen got it. <laughs> my, Gwen got it already. And I do not. Nope. I'm good. <laughs> she ain't you know, but you know, your mama already told you it's See, grown. It like it's we grown around here. <laughs> I just, I just don't need. I don't, I don't need to give the government or or help. I mean, Jeff Bezos of all people. I'm gonna tell y'all about one of my neighbors who who moved in all of a sudden, and and uh, uh, and I thought that they were sent by Amazon. Because uh, well, anyway, I digress. I'm not gonna put something in my house that Jeff Bezos could just bloop. Let me listen to Ben Dixon real quick. I'm good. Somebody just said that they unplugged theirs and it was still going, and then oh, they, no. <laughs> but they no, have the Alexa with batteries. That was probably the first generation. Oh, okay. I don't know yeah. what's going on. Y'all so be, eager yeah. to let these people gotta, listen to y'all? You, no. And then they're going to they, they worry ben, about got the, an the microchip. And, about but Ben, the you got an iPhone and yeah. you have a MacBook, so I don't need yeah. you talking about nothing. All of them. Yeah. Okay. But they, <laughs> and they watch they, it at we, every opportunity they can get. Yeah, yeah. But what's his I'm name? Tim Cook over there in your business. <laughs> I, I, I'm not adding on top of it the ability of Facebook to just come in now. Now, listen, yeah. Who what, who the president of, of Apple right now? Tim Cook. So yeah, Tim Cook. Tim probably, Cook. Yeah, he can he could drop in on me anytime. But so everybody else. But yeah, Mark Zuckerberg, I ain't giving that man. And, and you think that Mark Zuckerberg and Tim Cook don't know each other and don't sit at the same table, um, analyzing and putting together these they things? Do, but I ain't going exactly to put ass. an Alexa. That's right. why I'm not putting an Alexa in my side. house. Talking about some, uh, the I ain't how, how no can Alexa. We ca- continue to take over the world. You know, but I've yeah. already I've already went into space. Now, but what those else are good can points. I do? Those, those are really good points, right? <laughs> those are really really good points. And and for people who are concerned about there being a microchip in the vaccine, you can't really re- be concerned about them tracking you when you have an iPhone or, or Android or Alexa or any of those things. Um, speaking of uh, vaccine and and pandemics and all those things, um, Kareem Abdul Jabbar, the original. Um, he has been a commentator after he has been the championship winning basketball phenom. He's handled so many critical issues. Listen to what this brother had to say about the pandemic in general, the vaccine, and as it pertains to black people, because he said a mouthful. Let's take a listen in. You've called for the NBA to insist that all players and staff be vaccinated. And if they refuse, you believe that they should be removed from the team. Why do you feel so strongly about that? Well, I think that uh, when we ignore uh, 
a pandemic that is killing people just because some people uh, don't feel like doing some research. I, 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 I can't go along with that. This COVID thing is killing black people and brown people at a ridiculous rate. So, you know, it's really an, an extension of Black Lives Matter. And uh, we have to make this uh, obvious and uh, let people know how important it is. All right, we're getting ready to get out of here. Rebecca, James, get the last word before we take it over to the after party. If you're not, why would you just put that clip up and not even talk about it? Yeah, because we're going to. No, 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 because I want you. I'm going to pass it to y'all to get the last words because I've I've been talking the whole day. So, Rebecca. Well, the the last word wouldn't be for me on this segment because I'll talk forever. So, I'm just going to say head over to the after party so we can continue the conversation. But, yeah, like. Why would you do that to our people? I know why you did that, because if you weren't a patron, you should become one. You should head over right now to patreon.com forward slash like it or not and become a patron today so we can see how this conversation is going to unfold because there's so much. There's so much moving pieces right now in this conversation with a lot of our favorite sports player. That's all I'll say for now. That's right about that. No, and no joke about that. No cap. (laughs) Uh, James, it's in your hands. Uh, Thanks everybody to everybody across the team. David, Dwayne, the double D's in the background, Georgia, who had a day off the Reverend, the right Reverend Anthony Galloway. Thanks so much for hanging out with us, Rebecca. It's always a pleasure. Uh, Every day. TV. (laughs) AP at the party. Y'all make sure y'all stay tuned, man. Thank you again for joining us. This a layup, this a rebound, then it's dry, man Taste with the fade, not the air, my hands rockin' When I link with ball point, you know it's rock, 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 rock I'm not the same Y'all make sure that you get not come to the after party and head over to the back of the channel. If you're in the after party, we'll see y'all in a second. Hey guys, it's your moment, y'all. I'm just playing in the cut, I got my hands on. I'm not selfish, I get on to put my man's on. Oh, it's beat these senses, I got my first safe. Five seven, but I'm six eight. When I stand on the money pals, money pals, money pals. Need a money counter. I broke my thumb from. Th- All right, y'all. To close out the show for this one, and to close out the show for this one, yeah, I get to hear people. Don't do my mom on my line. That's good. Couple for y'all, y'all now. Y'all have a good evening. Good evening. Good morning. We will see y'all on Monday. 80s, 90s party is going to go down next week. You don't want to miss it. Next Friday, it is gone. So, we love y'all. Mean it. And we will see y'all next week. Man, enjoy your weekend. Be safe. Oh, yes. Minute. Affirmation for today. I am letting go of all negativity. Affirmation for today. I am letting go of all negativity. Love you. Mean it. We'll see y'all on Monday. Southern California But I'm allergic to the rain What happened to euphoria?